to all the men out there. There's a lot going on right now, locally at least here in South Africa, as well as globally. I'll quickly zone in on South Africa specifically. Last week, Thursday, we had the State of the Nation Address by our President, Mr. Excellency, Mr. Ramaphosa, or His Excellency, Mr. Ramaphosa. And there were some very interesting things that were ultimately shared there. Also, we are finding ourselves in a very interesting place as a nation as well. We have the 2024 elections coming up too. So there's a lot happening. There's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of anxiety, as well as a lot of anger amongst people too. And what I want to speak to you guys about this morning is how do we as true men actually respond to living in a woke world, in a corrupted world, and in a broken world? How do we essentially respond to all of the things that are currently busy happening and ultimately busy taking place? And to zone in again on the State of the Nation address last week, Thursday, well, you can essentially respond in, in three different ways, okay? Two of them are incorrect and one of them is correct. How do I know that the one is correct? Because it comes from God's Word. And other than the Holy Spirit, the only other perfect thing on this earth today is actually God's word, the Bible, the written word of God. That is, other than the Holy Spirit, the only perfect thing that is on the earth here today. And what I want to share with you guys is those three different ways we can ultimately respond. And it's not just towards the state of the nation address, but also towards corruption, also towards brokenness, right? Also towards injustices that we see happening in the world today. How do we respond? Well, the first way is for you as a man to become aggressive, right? So, ah, and, and getting angry and, and so forth. When that happens, you'll end up speaking the language of complaints and bitterness. Side note, for me, sometimes when I see the injustices and the corruption of what's busy happening out there, I'll be completely honest with you. I end up becoming very, very angry with all of this. And then this is, this is a very important point, right? That you then learn to take that anger and not turn it into aggression, but you learn to take that anger to the Father, to God, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit, and allow Him to turn that anger into something so incredible, something so missionary, something so noble, something so excellent. Allow Him to turn that anger into a noble cause where you learn to stand for what is right, for what is true, for what is just, for what is praiseworthy, and for that which is excellent. Back to the video. Now, you must understand that when a runner ultimately runs a race, think of the comrades quickly or of the two oceans or the London Marathon. One thing that I personally have not seen is that when people run a marathon, they don't run them with ankle weights. Why? Because you want to be as light as possible. So what's the point, William? The point is that you, my friend, as well as myself, you, my brother over there, all right, you are currently running a race. We are currently running a race. And when you run a race, you want to make sure that you are ultimately as light as possible, meaning that you don't carry heavy weights you're not supposed to be carrying. The Bible actually instructs us and guides us so elegantly telling us, let us throw off everything that entangles us, right? Let us throw off everything that so easily entangles us. For some of it, for some of us rather, it is throwing off sin. For some of us, it is throwing off unbelief, right? For some of us, it is throwing off rebellion and immorality and so forth. It's about throwing off these things so that you can actually run the race you've been called to run. For some of you watching, it's about throwing off that bitterness. It's about throwing off that rage. It's about throwing off that, uh, that unforgiveness, right? That hatred within your heart. It's about throwing those things off and allowing Jesus to heal your heart so that you can effectively and efficiently and successfully and victoriously keep on moving forward. So responding with aggression is not the way to go, right? The other way for us to res respond, which is also wrong, is to become passive, to become timid and to become weak men who end up doing absolutely nothing and who continue to essentially suffer in silence. That is also not the way we're supposed to go. How do I know? Well, the Bible again teaches us, our Father teaches us according to two Timothy 1 verse 7, he tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity or cowardice, but a spirit of power, 
of love and of a sound mind. And like we've shared in previous videos before, the spirit of power over there, power for you to accomplish the very thing that God has called you to fulfill, to accomplish that very assignment, that, that very purpose, that very objective for your life, as well as, you know, to, to lead others into that particular purpose moving forward. Uh, the spirit of love over there so that we can continue to connect with other people and not just be task orientated all the time, but actually also connect with people. Again, side note, nothing wrong with being task orientated. I think a lot of men actually drift towards that way. However, we can learn also to be a bit more relational. Hence, God has given us that spirit of love so we can learn to connect with others. It's fascinating that we have phones that are connected to Wi-Fi. However, we struggle to connect with each other. Okay, that's a major, major problem and we need to Change that by God's grace moving forward. And then lastly, number three over there, spirit of a sound mind where we can draw a, a, a inspiration and a vision from God, our Father, so that we can lead our families, so that we can lead our communities, the cities and the countries in whatever area of influence or dominion that God has called you into as a man moving forward forward. So the way not to respond is to not to become aggressive also and not to become passive and timid and weak, right? Where you continue to suffer in silence and your family suffers in silence, your business suffers in silence, your ministry suffers in silence. That's not the way to go about it. Actually, the solution is for us to ultimately become like Christ, to become like Jesus. Now, I know it might be tough for some of you to, to surrender and yield your life to Jesus because you believe in a life from Satan where you believe that you know in order for you to become like Jesus it means you must become more and more like your grandma and that's not the truth all right God hasn't called you to become your grandma God hasn't called you to become your mother all right God hasn't called you to become your auntie God has called you as a man to become the man he has called you to be he actually has a desire to father you and take you from being a boy who is dependent upon others and mature you into a godly uh, Christ-centered, kingdom-focused, Bible-focused, uh, uh, all right, uh, missionary who goes into the workplace, right, who goes into his family and who leads according to God's definition of leadership, which is ultimately us serving, right? If any of us wants to become great, we must become a servant. If anyone wants to be first, we must be slave to all. So some of you believe that in order for you to become like Christ, you must become like your grandma, which is not the truth. As a man, God has actually given you certain desires, certain passions, and a sense of wildness on the inside where you are both tough as well as tender, where you are both courageous as well as caring, right? Where you both a fighter as well as faithful to what is right, what is true, what is praiseworthy, what is excellent, where you are both a warrior as well as creative. Why? Because you bear the image of, of God within us which unfortunately got tainted by sin, but has been restored because of Jesus. So as you follow Jesus, you become more and more the man that he has created you to be so that you can lead your, your wife, so that you can not be over domineering towards her and also not be passive towards her, but to lead the way Jesus leads, to love your wives like Christ loves the church and to be a blessing then to your children and your children's children moving forward, to leave a godly legacy moving forward. So again, coming back quickly towards the corruption and the wokeness within the world today, all right? Sometimes we look at what's busy happening out there and we see the misgovernance, we see the mismanagement, right? We see the abuse of power and influence and, and, and position and all of these things. We, we see incompetence out there, right? We believe that, oh, I can do a better job and so forth, okay? We see the incompetence out there. We see the controlling nature where people try and drive their agenda in your face each and every single day. We see the effects of passiveness where, where people People just allow evil to happen and completely overwhelm their families and, and business and, and, and ministry or, or schools or, or, you know, in the area of medicine as well. So we see that happening too. Okay. However, I want to, I want to ask you today, all right, where are you at? I know there's a lot happening out there, but my question to you today is as we close, where are you at? my friend, all right, my champion, brother, where, where are you at within your life? And I have a couple of questions I want to ask you this morning because you must understand that accountability is vitally important. Why? Because accountability leads to development. Accountability leads to, leads to growth, right? It leads to progress within life. So here's a couple of accountability questions I want to ask you today as a brother, right? And hopefully you, you, you can hear the heart behind this. I love you and I want your life to move forward. I want you to be 
become the empowered man that God has called you to be for the sake, not only of your own life, but for the sake of all those whom God has essentially entrusted to your care. And you may be thinking about, well, you're talking to us about manhood and masculinity here, yeah, but you've got a pink cover for your phone. It's my wifey's old phone. All right. So just, just keep, just, 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 just keep yourself patient over there. We're about to get into some stuff. Don't get distracted here. All right. So here's some accountability questions. And the first question is this, is your relationship with God in order? Right. Stop looking at what's happening within the government. This is how we respond. Stop looking at what's happening within the government. We get, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Right. But what's happening within your life? Is your relationship with God in order? Number two, if you are married, is your relationship with your wife in order? If you aren't currently married, is your relationship with your girlfriend in order? Order. What I mean by that is, I mean, this past Wednesday, we had Valentine's Day, right? And a lot of young men today, because they don't know what it means to be a true and a real man, what happens is they end up just sleeping with their girlfriends and, and thinking that it's love. Meanwhile, it's not. It's lust. Sex, my friend, is a right that is reserved or a privilege that is reserved for those who have essentially made the commitment towards marriage. And I personally have seen the effects of sexual immorality within my own life, right? Before I gave my life to Christ Jesus, I was literally all over the place, right? Right? I was I was that quote unquote that player in the nightclubs who would go out looking for women and, and trying to get with women and so forth. And it led to absolute disaster. And I ended up in the back of a police van 12 odd years ago, right? That's not the way to go. God's way, my friend, actually works. And God and, and sex is something is a gift. Well, sex is a gift rather from God for those that have made the commitment towards marriage. Okay. So number one is is your relationship with God in order. Number two, is your relationship with your wife or your girlfriend in order? Number three over here, is your relationship with your children in order? order all right is your relationship with your children in order so you see what i mean by saying forget about what's happening in the government look at your own family right now because what you want to learn to do within life is to control the controllables you can't always have uh, you know What's the right word to, to use here? You can't always control ultimately what happens within parliament. Yes, we can sign petitions. Yes, we can pray and so forth. However, God has given you dominion and influence over an authority over a particular area. Case in point within our families, right? Case in point within wherever God has called you to work in as a man, because men work, right? If a man does not work, he is not able to eat. Okay. So men must work. Okay. So is your relationship with your children in order? Because I feel some of you watching today, you don't really have that relationship with your child because maybe perhaps your dad never showcased a relationship towards you and now you feel that's how it goes. But that's not the case because God is our father and God desires to have a relationship with us and therefore we should cultivate and build relationships with our children. If you have not done so and your, and your kids tend to resent you, here's some good news, okay? You can begin to pray for them today because as men, like we are trying to find things that we are supposed to be doing well you can pray for them right you can pray that God would bring healing over them and that God would soften their hearts and that they would again allow you back into their life and so forth as you continue to follow Jesus moving forward right so is your relationship with God in order number four is your relationship in work at order and your relationships at work are they in order remember again we're not supposed to be over controlling and domineering and overbearing and we're also not supposed to be passive timid and weak we are supposed to be what you call like Christ which is assertive meaning we say what needs to be said and we ultimately do what needs to be done and the motivation the foundation of that is always love right because the greatest love is this to lay down your life for your brothers and for your sisters and for your friends so is your relationship at work in order and your relationships at work in order right number five have you acted on what god has shared already in your life or are you just waiting for a new revelation to happen and take place? Or have you acted on what God has shared with you? Remember, faith without works is dead. That means the opposite is true. Faith with works is alive. I'm not talking about your salvation here. I'm talking about you responding to what, towards what God is calling you to do moving forward. Okay. Number six, are you accountable to somebody in authority where you can be honest about your weaknesses? This is a huge problem amongst men because we don't like to showcase our weaknesses before others. If nobody knows what your weaknesses are, how can they pray for you? How can they counsel you? How can they coach you? How can they guide you in the right direction? That's our, our precious son, Jan Barkin, in the back there. 
all right, Boston Terrier. So are you, um, are you accountable to someone in authority? He's coming over here. He's, he's saying, yes, amen and amen, right? Are you accountable to someone in authority where you can be honest about your weaknesses? My friend, listen, the Bible actually again tells us, confess your sins to each other so that we can pray for each other so that you might be healed. You're not supposed to be sitting there suffering in silence. You're supposed to find somebody that you can be accountable towards. Number one, you're accountable towards God, right? Number two, you're accountable towards yourself. If you're married, you're accountable to your spouse as well. Number three, you, number four, rather if you if you own a business or if you are leading a ministry you are accountable to those whom God has entrusted to your care and then also a wise move to make is to become accountable to somebody in a position of authority for example in my case I have a pastor right and other incredible spirit-filled men Christ-centered men all right who can hold me accountable and whom I can also share things with because again all right I say this respectfully if ladies are watching all right it does take a man to raise a man Okay, because femininity cannot bestow mis masculinity upon a boy or upon a man. It must, it, it does come from man to man. Alrighty. Hopefully you guys are getting something out of this. If you are smash that like button and also then at the end of the video, consider sharing it with somebody. Last two questions here. Do you know what your priorities are as a man? And is your life aligned with those priorities? If, if not, the good news is you can find out what your priorities are and begin to align your life with those priorities. So you can begin to see the needle move forward. Remember, busyness doesn't equal achievement. Just because you're moving doesn't mean that you're essentially moving forward. You want to be effective as well as efficient, right? Not only do you want to do the right things, but you want to do the right things well you want to be thorough you want to be diligent in your in your dealings with your spouse with your children with your business with your ministry whatever you know if you're employed all right with your employer you want to do things right why because it's always the right time to do the right thing and then lastly over here are you daily fulfilling your life's purpose or are you just simply going through the motions are you daily fulfilling your life's purpose or are you just going through the motions and I want to leave you with some verses here Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 says do not be deceived God cannot be mocked a man reaps what he sows whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction so pretty evident right if you plant a mango a mango tree you're gonna reap mangoes okay if you plant an apple tree you're going to reap an apple tree with apples on them it'll be shocking that if you plant an apple tree uh, you end up reaping watermelons it doesn't work like that so if you sow to please the flesh your sinful nature guess what happens to you as a man destruction is the result but if you sow to please the spirit from the spirit you will reap eternal life my friend Okay, because the true sons are those that are led by the Spirit, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 14. And for us to, as men, to respond to what's happening in this woke world, in this broken world, in this corrupt world, yes, we can point fingers at everybody else, but it starts and stops with us, my friend. We need to learn to take the plank out of our own eye first, so that we can then deal accordingly with the speck in our brother's eye moving forward. And the awesome news is this, that God, our Father, is right there, Jesus Christ our King and the Holy Spirit our comfort and our teacher is right there to continue to help you through this process to empower you through this process and to give you the tools and the resources and everything that you need moving forward to be the true man God has called you to be because again it doesn't help we respond in aggression it doesn't help we respond with passivity we need to respond like Jesus being assertive where we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to be the man that he has called us to be so that we can say what needs to be said said and do what needs to be done that's what we got for you guys today may you have a really awesome weekend there on your side all right enjoy it and may you even use this weekend perhaps to spend some real quality time with God as, as you allow him to father you and to initiate you more and more into manhood moving forward so you can be of a greater blessing to those whom he has entrusted to your care namely your wife your children or your girlfriend in the workplace wherever you might find yourself today as a man also I want to encourage you today to share this video with at least 10 men out there all right when the men arise when the men are empowered things will end up getting fixed all right so go out and be the man God has called you to be and just know today that your voice today that your voice matters